Hmm. Speaking of um, sort of touching on what you mentioned a little bit earlier in terms of people getting out there and, and enjoying life or sort of participating in life, why do you think there's not a lot of people, I guess in your opinion, why do you think there's not a lot of Pacifica people doing that as much in terms of running for local government, having their say, you know, trying to impact we, their communities? We do. We have this huge amount of Pacifica people in local board, um, in council, and now we have, you know, in parliament. Hmm. For me, the the problem is that we're not holding them accountable to any real results. And this is our Pacific way of thinking. So whereas white people, I, I had to explain this a few weeks ago, I said, no, I said white people generally like, you know, you believe that kid grows up, they move on, have their life and, you know, and you've sort of invested equally into every child so that they can live their own individual life. Whereas Pacific don't do that. It's, we invest heavily into one person mm. who's gonna grow up and look after the family. Mm. And, and you're seeing it less and less, but that's the traditional way of thinking. So, um, and we give a certain amount of deference, amount of esteem, amount of honor to a person with the understanding that on the flip side of it, they should look after the family. So, take it to government and local board and leadership. We are more than happy to give them our votes and stuff with the understanding that they're going to take care of us and represent our interests when it matters. Then it comes to, well, we've been in the same shit for ages and nothing really changes, and yet we can't blame it on... In, in Mangri, for example, Labour has held that for 51 years now. Can you really say it's the white man's fault? How many white people do you interact with in your day in Mangri? You know, it's it, then it becomes where we start looking around, and the amount of people in the election said to me, you know, they don't like national, but William Seal does nothing, and they said they can't bring themselves to vote national, but they're stuck in you know, and, and the only other options is William Seal, <laughs> and yeah. that's. <laughs> You know, and then so what happens is then you become disengaged with the whole process because you're like, well, wait a minute, you know, why would I put so much energy into this and nothing changes? Mm. And that's where, you know, this whole disenfranchisement comes in and then they blame the system, you know. And I, I said, I was explaining to someone a month ago when they said, um, they said, oh, you know, it's not the system's fault. I said, yeah, it is, sort of. And they said, well, what do you mean? I said, if I talk about systematic problems, or systematic racism, or systemic racism, or whatever. I said it's basically you look at the the board or life or the game as snakes and ladders, and right now there are more snakes and not very no, many not ladders. ladders. So that's it. And I said, so then it's someone's job to go get rid of the snakes and put more ladders in there. The problem is that our leaders aren't doing that for us right now, mm. and instead we're blaming the system system as a whole yeah. that's how it's supposed to work you mm. step on the ladder you go down you know what i mean whose job is it to put more ladders there mm. you know and so instead of blaming the leaders who are supposed to be there to be pest control and get rid of these snakes and be builders of ladders mm. we just blame the system and say i do not participate in the system and you go and pelt in the corner and fold your arms it doesn't change you don't, anything. You know, though. Yeah, exactly. You don't change anything by just blaming, yeah. just ge generalizingly blaming the system. The the best way to get nothing done is to blame some big blob, vague entity out there. Yeah. You know, whereas I believe 100% in personal responsibility and total agency over your life. Yes, you might be absolutely, I said, yeah, the system, okay, systemic racism, yes. Toxic masculinity, yes. I said, all of these problems, yes. Colonization, throw Christianity in there. You can have all of that. I will concede all of that to the argument. And then what? And that's what no one's been able to answer. Because yeah. I said, you know. Because there is this sort of infatuation for playing the victim card, though, isn't there? Like, for certain people in our society, in certain groups, mostly people sitting on the left side, there's this some weird infatuation where, yes, they can identify all these things that's happened to them historically or happened to their people, not necessarily them 
in particular, right? They usually advocate most of the time, not them. Most of the time, most of the time, not them. Most of these young brown activists have never had a day truly poor. Hmm. Some of these activists, when I look at them and I look at where they're from, and they you know, and people bring it up to me, and I said, I know that family. I said they are middle class for South mm. Auckland. They are not poor. Mm. They did not grow up in a state home. You know, they have which if you bring it down to the true essence of if they were what you know, if we were to use the same stick on them, they are appropriating someone else's experience. Mm. And, you know, and I I'm not gonna name names here because it's not what this is about. But you can name names if you want. <laughs> no, I don't I don't need that much smoke before Christmas. No, no exactly. But I'm not a for me, I don't care anyway, because the reason why you will not be successful in that vein is because it's not truly yours. And I, you know, I, I can't remember who said, you know, some in the, on these T-shirts I saw it was amazing. You know, only the hood can save the hood. Hmm. And I thought to myself, absolutely, because you know we've moved from white saviors to brown saviors, advocates. But these are just token brown people that they're throwing up, not people who actually grew up in the struggle, actually grew up with the values, actually grew up in the context. And once you, you know, and the problem is that because we don't empower the people through their stories to say you have all that it takes despite all of this. You know, if someone says to me, you know, I've had this much and this much and this much hardship, I say to them, that's an amazing story. And you use that story as a way of empowering them to build a better life.